this video, we are going to set up the mobile touch controls using the cross-platform input manager provided by Unity. So to get started, we need to go to the Asset Store by going to Window, Asset Store, and we're going to search for the Unity Standard Asset Pack. The Unity Standard Asset Pack is going to provide us with what's called a cross-platform input controller. So in the Asset Store here, we're going to search for Unity Standard Assets. All right, and this is what we want. We want the Standard Assets by Unity Technology. It's a free package. And what you're going to do is you're just simply going to import. Now, if you installed the asset, the Standard Assets with the installation of Unity, you don't need to do this. It's only if you haven't yet. So when you're ready, hit Import and Download. If you already have it with your install of Unity, you can simply go to Assets, import package and here we can select cross-platform input. When you select that it's going to pop up here and it's going to give you everything required for the cross-platform input controls. So go ahead and import this. It's going to create a new folder in your root called standard assets and this will take several moments. Go ahead and pause the video and I'll see you when it's finished. When that is finished, you'll have a folder called Standard Assets. Within that is a cross-platform input folder and within that is a prefabs folder. And within this, we are going to use the mobile single stick control. So to get started with this, we are going to drag this into the scene view by dragging it directly into the hierarchy. By adding that to the hierarchy, you'll see here that I automatically added two elements here, a joystick and a button for us to use as a template. Now, if we run this, we won't be able to actually do anything, and that's because we have our HUD display here overlaying these buttons and joysticks. So what I want to do here is I want to open up our HUD real quickly, and I'm going to take our joystick and turn off the image component. We're going to replace it with this one in a moment. But if you run the game by using the mobile single stick control, it's going to allow us to drag this movement control. So automatically, because we're in mobile development, it knows that, hey, you're going to be using this. And if we were to build this and put it on the phone right now, it will, it will allow us to actually use these inputs. And it's not going to actually work or control anything because it's not hooked into our code base yet. But what we want to do is we want to swap this guy's image out for our buttons or for our joystick. And then also we have this button here that we can click we need to swap this out for the B and A buttons. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we want to do here is on our mobile stick control, we're going to open that up. We have our mobile joystick and the button thumb up sprite is going to change to be our, our joystick sprite. So here we have our joystick, it's the thumb button. So let's select that, the mobile joystick, the circle with the dot to replace it. And here we'll do our thumb. And there we go. So we've replaced that and we can go ahead and make this much bigger. So this is a 512 by 512 image. 512 by 512. And you want to select possibly preserve aspect ratio. Although we do maybe want to stretch it down because it is a little large right now. So let's go ahead and actually make this 256 by 256. Go ahead and set it to 256 by 256. We'll have to play around with this and see how it looks on the mobile device. But once we have that, what we can do then is we can run the game and let's test out the movement. So here we go. You can see here we have a wide range of movement. One of the things we can do here is we can limit the movement range. So let's go ahead and set it to about half, so 50. And that's going to make it so that we're more constrained. So I'd say 50 is pretty good, and maybe you can go even lower if you'd like, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep it at 50 for the joystick range. Let's save this. And the next thing we need to do is we need to swap out the buttons. So here we have button A and button B. We're no longer gonna be using these buttons, so turn off those images. And let's go ahead and use the, we're gonna swap in those images for this button here. So we have our jump button, which is an example button. Let's rename it to A button, and then we'll duplicate it and create a B button afterwards. So for A button, we're going to use, we have an A button.
And what we can do here is actually let's re-enable our HUD display buttons so that we can get a proper scale and size. Let's re-enable that. And let's go ahead and move the A button up to there. So here's our A button. And we're going to go ahead and move it up. So let's go ahead and take this from the top here. And what we should do is focus in on that button and then we can move it up by its transform. And here we go. So this is where our A button's gonna be. And then let's go ahead and fix the scale of this guy so that it looks more appropriate. Uh, simply set it to preserve aspect ratio and that seems to help it a lot so that it can't stretch out. And what we can do here, let's hide button A and that's what we're left with. So what we can then do is take this and let's go ahead and increase the scale by about two and maybe 1.5. I'd say that looks pretty good. All right, once we've done that, what we can do here is there's a text object in here. Just go ahead and clear it out. We don't need any text in there. Okay, so that's button A. Let's go ahead and duplicate that to create button B. Call it button B. So B button. And once we've done that, we're going to move it to be next to button A. All right, so here's button B. Swap out the image source with the B button. Okay, we're good to go. The last thing we wanna do is add that tint back. So let's select each one. And on the color property, set the alpha to 100. Gives it that grayish tint. And that looks pretty good. If we were to re-enable these three, you can see they pretty much line up just fine. So I'm pretty happy with that. If we wanted to, we could possibly move these two down a little bit more. Let's try that. Let's go ahead and take A button and B button, move them down. And just like that. All right, so what we can do now is we can save this. And in the next video, we are going to hook it up into our code. Save your scene. I'll see you in the next video.